And welcome back to our coverage, the aftermath of Hurricane Ida. I'm Martin Foss, joined by Sheriff Tim Sonier. And Sheriff, when you, when you came in, it, I could tell in your face that you've been down to Bayou's and you've been looking at some of the scenes and uh, it's reality, isn't it? It's reality. Yeah, yeah. What were you, uh, what were you seeing? What kind of emotions were you going through? Because I, I think you and a lot of others are going through the same thing. Uh, this was a tough storm. Yes. Yeah. What about you and your your officers out there? They've been working hard, working many hours. About thirty of my officers lost their homes. Thirty. Wow. And and, and, and they I continue think, to work. And I think that's the reality of it. We have uh, several over here who've lost homes, and and you're right. They keep trudging along, and they keep moving forward. Have you ever seen that, that kind of spirit that you see? It's unbelievable, isn't it? You know, I, despite what's going on, my officers, our firefighters, all those guys are working, we're working together. We're working real hard to kind of keep our, our people are hurting. And it makes me hurt, it hurts my heart. Yeah. You know, I've, I've talked to you many times and uh, I think as we saw these things come in or hurricanes come in I don't want to say we got complacent because we all know what hurricanes could do this one developed so quick I just don't know if people were ready and really mentally got prepared for it as well no it uh, I think it we had a lot of runs last year and uh, mm -hmm. this one this is gonna be the one and uh, we saw it coming I'm like I just had, we talked about it earlier, we had a feeling about this yeah. one, I think we talked about it on television. We did. That we had a feeling about this one, and as I watched it develop, and I'm, at first it was, it was gonna shift to the east, it was gonna shift, and then when it started pushing to the west, and I'm like, here we go. And uh, and when it hit, it was it was pretty devastating, you know. But look, I, I wanna stress to our people. Sorry about that. Uh, we, we sort of need that music right now, the, the Marine, the Marine well, song. You know, I want to stress to our people, we feel you, and we're going to continue to work hard so we can bring things back to normal, but we want to do it together. You know, I, I was sitting there, I was riding down the bayous, and people out there cleaning their house, they got piled, and one man had tarp on his roof, putting piles of trash, and he's cutting his grass. Mm -hmm. With all the devastation and everything's going on, he had his own stuff, but he's out there getting his grass, he's taking pride. And, and bringing his place back together. And in a way that makes him feel normal again. Bringing back some normalcy and mm -hmm. to, to our community. We're gonna get things back and we're gonna win. And we're gonna work yeah. together. Yeah. How many search and rescues did y'all perform throughout well, that? Well, you know, I'm glad you asked that question. Um, <clears throat> earlier during the stage of the morning of the storm, we had our people on our checkpoints to buy use and we normally keep checkpoints and I was monitoring uh, wind speeds. I had some monitors. I was able to monitor like Bush Canal, a couple areas uh, along the way. That was the most easterly part of the parish. And then when we seen the, the wind started picking up real quick to about 75 miles an hour, and I quickly brought my people up about halfway, and we monitored, and we saw the wind. And I brought them, and I brought them all to the civic, to, um, downtown. And uh, during the first two hours, we started getting phone calls. When I got my guys there, we were able to park our vehicles in the, in the garage to protect them. I got my guys in and we started receiving calls. I lost my roof. Hunker down, we're gonna get to you. And we wrote the address down. I lost my roof, hunker down, we're gonna get to you. Then we get a call of apartment complex right by Shawbear Hospital. The only thing we can think of is I got an armored vehicle and they had six people. And I said, they're not gonna survive it. And six people we sent about three of our guys in there with my armored bearcat mm -hmm. what a SWAT team normally uses and that was the safest vehicle I thought we can get them there we got them there and we saved them all they wouldn't survive it mm -hmm. this was about the first two hours of the storm they had about I want to say 12 hours of relentless winds that just never let up it stayed consistent um, the addresses and the kind of finish the address is within about two hours after the storm started to subside. It wasn't quite over yet, but I sent my people out there and we started rescuing probably over 100 people mm -hmm. before night, before it got daylight and we started clearing roads. And the firefighters, I was out there and told me, Henry, I'm proud of you. Mm 
Mm-hmm. No doubt. And it's he that was out of, there. He was cleaning. We were out there with him. But it was that kind of work that saved a bunch of lives. And, you yeah. know, I, I don't say this in any disrespect to people who've lost their lives in other places, but over here, we go get it. That's it. Yeah. You know, I have to say, we were out there looking for ways to get around to try to clear roads and everything, and you seen a four wheel come up, and it's Toby with his firefighter helmet. You know, it was, mm-hmm. you know, I said that's what I'm talking about. But we're out there with him. We was we was working trying to clear roads. We got a tractor. We started clearing roads, and then yeah. and we we had to get had the ability to get our emergency vehicles through, and get them through as quick as possible. Meanwhile, we're we're getting everywhere we possibly can, and in about 100 something people all together, we was able to get out of our homes. And I'll say this as we approach in <clears throat> a break, and we'll come back and talk some more, but. To be in a vehicle, you know it and I know it, we cover storms, you work storms. To be in a vehicle with those wind speeds, it's not for the easy. No, it's not. It can be pretty... Um, it's harrowing. It's very, very scary. Yeah, there's no, no doubt about it. All right, we're going to take a short break with the sheriff of Terrebonne Parish, Tim Saunier. And you can obviously tell by his emotion, and I love his ringtone, the Marine Corps hymn song. But you can tell by his emotion that those bayous, uh, they're tough. And I, I've seen that emotion in a lot of public officials as they go around and look and they feel it. It's a tough deal. We're going to get past it, but it's going to take some toughness. We'll be right back.